Iru Marie adjusts back into his everyday life at the school. As he heads for lunch, the beast that had previously emerged from his ring once again appears. However, to both their surprise, he can suddenly now talk, discovering himself to be the manifestation of the gluttonous feeder ring. After chastising Aruma for his poor use of magical abilities, the beast gets him to use a transformation spell to give him a proper form, which ends up becoming a small, slender, one-eyed figure in a suit. He also tells Aruma to refer to him as Alacrit. He convinces Aruma to continue experimenting with his transformation abilities, eventually leading him to transform into his Arubi outfit. At this same time, Ameri finds him and is completely flustered and confused at the sight of Iruma in a dress, and runs off before he can explain himself. He wants to clear up the misunderstanding, but Alicrid refuses to reveal himself unless they can prove there are more cases like him. Iruma tries to ask Sullivan for answers, but he brushes it off as nonsense. While doing research on the ring and figuring out the moments in the past when Alicrid was conscious, Aruma figures out that the higher ranks he gets, the more Alacrid changes. Aruma declares his new goal to continue rising the ranks to learn the truth behind Alacrid, even if it means standing out more and still failing to clear up the misunderstanding with Ameri. Ameri has nightmares about Aruma cross-dressing. Crosel forces Aruma to wear his dress for a photograph as her fans are demanding to know who the idol was at her concert. During the struggle of Mary witnesses, Aruma on top of Crosel and drags him away. She asks him about the magical apparatus battler which, after the incident with Kiruo, has been closed. She offers to reopen it if Aruma, Clara, and Asmokios each obtain letters of recommendation from three battler presidents. Clara temporarily joins the gaming battler, Asmokios the new magic battler, and Aruma is forced to join the student council under a Mary. While carrying out student council tasks, Aruma starts to realize how capable Mary is, especially when she refuses to let Sullivan continue spoiling him. Later, while reading First Love Memories together, Mary's teacup breaks, which she considers ominous. Aruma soon grows into his role on the council, impressing the other members, while Mary considers whether to make him a real council member. Mary is lured away and drugged by an unknown hooded person, her absence is soon noticed by the council, and when they find her, she begins acting strangely. The student council learns that Amari has been infected by a spell that, while retaining her old memories, has turned her into a much more dainty laddie-like woman, and that she should return to normal if she keeps up her usual routine. However, the council finds themselves struggling to keep up with the workload Amari can no longer handle, as well as unable to keep up appearances due to current or cutesy persona. They are then surprised by the sudden arrival of the one the council believes to be responsible for Amari's predicament, the flamboyant president of the disciplinary battler, Rano Vromir. He declares his intentions to take over the student council now that Amari's no longer fit to run it, while playing coy when they ask if he put the spell on her. He challenges them to a dissolution election, where the student body can vote on who should be the student council, and whoever loses must be dissolved. Aruma slaps his hand away when he starts touching Amari, leading him to retreat, while the rest of the council praise him. The following day, Ronov uses his bloodline ability, Charisma, to campaign, leading to a mixed reception, until he promises to be more lenient slash fun than the current student council, while Amari struggles to keep up with her small support. Aruma decides to contact Clara and Asmovius for assistance when Amari asks him to talk. While waiting, Alicrit reappears, telling Aruma the spell is nearly undone and just needs a trigger to completely fix it. Amari then enters, facing Aruma dressed in her original student council attire. Amari had hoped her old outfit would trigger her return to normal, but she now considers quitting the council to begin a peaceful high school life with Aruma. Aruma refuses and praises the hard work of her old personality. During the election, Rono promises to make the school a pleasure paradise. Iruma's support reminds Amari of how great she wanted Babels to become, and she gives an impassioned speech imploring the students to pursue their own desires instead of Ranov's. Spotting Iruma in the crowd, Amari realizes she is completely in love with him, triggering her return to normal. Ronov denies cursing Amari just as Clara and Asmodeus apprehend the real culprit, Elagoth Sheenal, who created Laddie-like perfume to make Amari cutesy to satisfy his perverted fantasies. 
After Elagoth is punished, Mary invites Ranov onto the council. She also invites Aruma, but following her speech about pursuing his desires, he chooses to have the magical apparatus battler reinstated, but also hopes to see Amari at their next reading of First Love Memories. Alicrit suggests the last trigger was difficult because Amari secretly wanted Aruma to think she was cute. Amari worries about acting normally around Iruma, but finally decides to pursue her own desire to make Iruma hers. Sullivan decides to throw a party and insists Iruma invite his friends. Aruma cleans obsessively when Alagrid teases him about Clara being the first girl he invited over. Fearing he is not making a good impression, as Aruma's grandpa Sullivan insists they play Dark Parade in the basement, which Aruma realizes is the demon version of a test of courage. Sullivan sets up a fake monster he can defeat to impress Aruma's friends, only for Asmodeus to defeat it first. After Sullivan grovels for help, Opera uses a 3D projector to fake a dragon, which Sullivan defeats. They also find a chest containing a cake Opera made as the prize for winning the game. Sullivan is once again depressed when Opera gets more credit for the cake than he did defeating the dragon. After Clara and Asmodeus leave, Sullivan is cheered when Aruma thanks him for letting his friends visit. Aruma realizes he still has a lot to learn about demon society, though Allegret decides to secretly help and magically changes Aruma's personality to resemble a teenage demon experiencing their first evil cycle of wanting to do evil deeds. The next morning, Sullivan is horrified to discover his darling Aruma has become rude, ungrateful, and just downright evil. Aruma's new personality leads his classmates to assume Aruma is in his evil cycle. When Aruma sees other students taking advantage of his fellow mystic classmates, he confronts Caligo and demands they get a better classroom. Caligo claims there are no other available classrooms but Iruma demands the school give them the king's royal classroom, the classroom which the previous demon king Durkilov was a student in before becoming demon king, now closed to honor his memory. Caligo is enraged at the suggestion, so Iruma bets he can get the consent of every faculty member within three days, in which case Caligo will have to give them the room. Most of the misfits claim they don't actually care about the room, they only care about what is fun and best serves themselves which Aruma points out is how real demons should be, egotistical, selfish, and evil, which is exactly why the misfits deserve the king's classroom the most. Inspired, the whole class agrees to help win the room. Aruma reveals he has a plan to get the faculty's consent, and he requires the help of Jazz, the misfits' notorious thief and pickpocket. Aruma deliberately enrages Caligo, allowing Jazz to pickpocket his diary, which they trade to Momonoki an instructor with a crush on Caligo, for her consent. Clara gets the consent of Instructor Furcus in exchange for Schneider, the misfit's most intelligent student, assisting her research. Instructor Morax trades his consent for Kamui's perverted knowledge. Dicero and Goman get consent from Instructor Stolas in exchange for clearing weeds. Aruma poses for a family photograph to get Sullivan's consent. Instructor Aureus wagers his consent in a game with Light, the misfit's notorious gambler. Despite his luck boosting magic, Aureus is affected by the magic of Elizabetta to show her favoritism and loses to Lyde. Instructor Burr wagers consent on a duel with Sabnok, who tried to duel him during the opening ceremony. However, Sabnok offers a sincere apology for his actions, shocking Boer that Sabnok has matured so much, and he gives his consent. Aruma decides to get additional consent from a Mary in the council convincing her with a heartfelt speech about the misfit's potential and sealing the deal with a wall slap that overwhelms her heart. After three days, the misfits easily collect all remaining consents except one, Caligo's. Iruma confronts Caligo with the teacher's consent forms, but Caligo points out his agreement with Iruma used the word faculty, not teachers, meaning Iruma was supposed to get consent from everyone employed at Babels like the janitors, chefs, and librarians. For his lack of critical thinking, Caligo claims Aruma is unworthy to inherit Turkila's classroom. Suddenly, all the other staff arrives with their consent forms, having decided to help Aruma in gratitude for helping all of them in the past. Defeated, Caligo furiously gives his consent as well. As the classroom has been sealed for centuries, massive crowds gather to see the classroom, and the misfits learn they have become famous. Caligo opens the doors with much ceremony, revealing the classroom to be as luxurious as a castle with multiple floors, 
rooms, and expensive furnishings. Aruma takes possession of Dracula's old throne, shocking everyone into silence as he temporarily takes on the appearance of a true demon king. The very next day, Allegret's spell on Iruma finally runs out, returning Aruma to normal, revealing him to be completely embarrassed. Aruma apologizes to everyone at school, but they don't care as they have become closer as friend. Everyone poses for a photograph with Aruma on Dracula's throne, including a furious Caligo. Caligo informs the misfits' end of Terminus, Demon Summer Vacation, is approaching, but if they fail their exams, they must attend supplementary classes during Terminus instead. Aruma reveals to Clara and Asmodeus he is bad at studying. Plus, he can read the questions thanks to Sullivan's spell, but cannot understand what the questions are about. Asmodeus decides they will form a study group, revealing anyone with a high enough score goes up a rank, but score too low, and they could go down a rank. Mary forces Elagoth to join the magical apparatus battler as keeping an eye on him has become too time-consuming for the council. Alakert is also worried, since his intelligence is based on Aruma's rank, so if Aruma loses a rank, Alakrit will revert to a mindless black flame demon. Asmodeus quizzes Aruma on the exam's five subjects, and Aruma gets a perfect score on mythical zoology, as every question is about humans and human society. Experiencing an unusual level of confidence from his perfect score, Aruma decides to take an elective class in netherworld history taught by the mythical zoology textbook's author, Balam Shichiro, who is strange even by netherworld standards. Balam is obsessed with imaginary creatures that may or may not exist, like humans. While discussing how demons evolved wings, Balam notices Aruma doesn't seem to have any, until Alakrit hurriedly transforms into miniature wings and attaches himself to Aruma's back. Balam believes Aruma's small wings are a deformity and apologizes for exposing them, revealing that he himself is abnormal as his mask conceals his scared face. Aruma accidentally blurts out he is human and fears Balam will eat him. But instead, Balam is happy to have proof humans exist and warns Aruma to be more careful in the future, making Aruma realize he is actually quite nice. Returning to class, Aruma finds everyone depressed over studying. Aruma, who always had to spend summer breaks working, is motivated by invitations to spend Terminus having fun with the misfits. Balam appears, and it is revealed he and Kalego were actually classmates years ago and are still good friends. Seeing the misfits struggling, Balam shows them different ways of studying, such as singing songs and playing games, and even creates educational picture books for Iruma. The misfits begin helping each other and Iruma finds that studying has become fun. Finally, the day of the exams arrive. Kalego informs the misfits they all passed their exams. Several of them have gone up a rank, and Schneider, the most intelligent, has gone up two ranks. Asmodeus claims without Iruma's influence, most misfits would have failed. Kalego congratulates Iruma on passing, but it was not enough to go up a rank. Aruma informs Balam, who agrees Aruma seems able to influence people to be better. Kalego reveals Balam is the only other Chet, rank 8, apart from himself, and can sense lies which he uses to catch exam cheaters like Elagov. Though Balam does admit one student seems immune to detection. Mary invites Iruma to their usual manga reading, only for Clara to inform her Iruma is at karaoke with the boys, so she drags Mary to a girls-only tea party with Elisabetta and Crocell. Elisabetta insists on talking about relationships and Clara realizes she might have a crutch on Iruma and wouldn't mind marrying him, causing Mary to realize Clara might be a serious rival. After a brief argument over Iruma and Love Everyone agrees to swap contact information and meet for another tea party. Aruma arrives to read manga to a Mary, but is thrown out as it is a girl's only tea party. Caligo is furious when Sullivan forces him to carry out home visits. Visiting Asmodeus' home, he learns his obsession with Aruma has caused him to neglect his younger sisters. Caligo determines Asmodeus should focus on himself more and could become a very powerful demon. At Clara's home, he is mobbed by Clara's siblings until Urara, Clara's most normal brother, Calms everyone down long enough for Caligo to inform their mother Clara is a troublemaker with a good personality and a bright future, assuming she learns to think before she acts. The other visits go just as badly as he must duel Goldman's father, protect his wallet from Jazz's brother, and avoid marrying Lyde's older sister. Arriving at Iruma's home, it transpires Caligo is terrified of Opera, who is his senior in high school and would torment Caligo to amuse himself. Kalego informs Sullivan Iruma has average grades and is always involved in major incidents, 
but has made many useful friends and has a natural ability to overcome challenges. Caligo attempts to leave, but Opera tricks Iruman into summoning him in his cute owl form for amusement. As a result of the visit, Caligo gives the Misfits homework for over the holidays. Terminus begins, and the Misfits invite Iruma to the Walter Amusement Park. Iruma and the Misfits attend Walter Park, but Sullivan has insisted Caligo, Balam, and Opera attend as bodyguards. Mary also attends, mistakenly thinking it would be a date alone with Iruma. As the Misfits want to try different things, they split into three groups. Caligo is pressured into funding a prize for the team that has the most fun, but insists those in third place receive double homework. Opera takes the girls, Balam takes Iruma, Asmodeus, Sapnak, and Pissero, while Caligo takes Jazz, Goman, Kamui, and Lide. The girls decide to force a Mary to buy a cute dress. Caligo's team decide to somehow force him to enjoy himself. Aruma sees Ronov who reveals Walter Park is owned by his father. Ronov also accidentally reveals the park's basement is Euroboros prison, where imprisoned criminals secretly have their magic drained to power the park. It is revealed Kirio is in the prison and is working with a group of other inmates to escape, including outside assistance from the notorious Musashino crew an extremist group who believed demons should revert to being evil. Kirio had arranged to help them destroy Walter Park if they freed them from prison first. Opera's team have fun trying on dresses with Walter employees Mickey and Hugh Duran. Caligo's team take part in a shooting game with employees Atori and Maymaro. Caligo's team consider exploring Kiraraji Street, but are warned by Caligo a battle once occurred there between demons during their evil cycles, and even today, it is a corrupt place where criminals gather. Coincidentally, Aruma gets lost down Kiraraji Street and is almost grabbed by a shady demon, but is saved by a lady named Shida. Despite her serious demeanor, she buys him ice cream and asks if he can show her how to have fun. Aruma helps her play with animals at the petting zoo and ride a Ferris wheel. Eventually finding Asmodos, Aruma tries to thank Shida, but she disappears. Aruma learns about six fingers, another criminal group wanting to revert to the old ways. Ronov removes Pissero's sleep mask and discovers he is almost impossibly beautiful. Ronov's servant wet leaves and reveals he, Shida, Mickey, Huderin, Atori, and Maymaro are actually the Six Fingers planning to attack Uruboros and free Kirio. Wet sets off three magical items that summon three gigantic monsters to destroy the park, the Carmen Dragon, Mountain Blue Minotaur, and Pantherat. The monsters begin destroying the park. Caligo forces his team to fight Mountain Blue, even though they haven't learned attack magic yet. By combining their various powers, they manage to partially blind, distract, then attack Mountain Blue, but it has no real effect. Six Fingers infiltrate the prison to find Kirio and open all the cells to keep the guards busy. Vice Chief of the Prison, Triton the Handshaker, who once broke a dragon's neck with his bare hands, is defeated by Huderin whose strength surpasses Triton despite being only a few inches tall. Jazz, having the highest rank, is put in charge by the others, despite his own fear. Jazz tries and fails to come up with an effective plan, until Caligo gives him a hint about the necklace Jazz always wears. Iruma is upset the day is ruined and begins to experience an unusual feeling. Several children are trapped by rubble, and Iruma realizes no other demons are willing to help their natural selfishness preventing them helping unless it somehow benefits themselves, and they abandon the children with ease. Iruma finally realizes what his unusual feeling is, an emotion he has never experienced before anger. Iruma rushes to help, even though it puts him in the way of Dragon, inspiring his classmates to help. Opera fights Rat with a Mary insisting on helping. Jazz and the boys manage to distract Minotaur long enough for Jazz to climb inside its ear. His necklace is revealed to be an ear piercer whistle, which creates a sound wave that grows louder the more magic is put into it. Jazz creates such a huge sound wave it ruptures Minotaur's ears. Caligo decides they have done enough and steps in, defeating Minotaur with a single move, which he admits was fun and agrees to pose for a victory photograph. Krosel sees the other guests panicking, quickly changes into her Kuromu persona, and puts on an impromptu Demdoll show to ease everyone's fear. Mary reveals her bloodline ability, Romantista, which increases her physical abilities the more she believes in herself. 
With her confidence boosted by Crossel's song, she defeats Rat easily. Opera is so impressed, he offers her a job working for Sullivan and Mary is tempted as it would mean living in the same house as Aruma. Aruma and Picero save the children, while Asmodeus and Sabnak prepare to battle Dragon. Asmodeus and Sabnak become distracted arguing with each other while fighting Dragon. Dragon turns on Balam, Iruma, and the children, who only survive thanks to Balam. Asmodeus is distracted thinking Iruma is hurt, allowing Dragon to kill Asmodeus. Iruma is devastated until it is revealed Sabnak had saved Asmodeus. Sabnak is still willing to fight, having learned to surpass his limitations when Aruma saved him from the Valley Guardian and scolds Asmodeus for being so concerned with Aruma, he forgot to have ambitions of his own. Balam creates the giant wooden dragon Nijipmir and kills Dragon. Six Fingers sends the three monsters defeat and merge it into the larger composite magical beast. Opera has Aruma summon Caligo in his owl form who teams up with Balam and Opera to defeat Beast. Caligo is devastated to learn that when in his owl form is familiar, Cerberus becomes a puppy. Beast gathers its remaining magic to create a bomb to kill everyone in the park's emergency shelter. Unable to do anything in time, everyone is shocked when Ronov appears and uses his charisma ability to force Beast to look at him, aiming the bomb away from the shelter and towards himself. Just as Ronov is about to die, Aruma steps in front of him. Ruma unleashes Alakrit who swallows Beast's magic, defeating it for good. Caligo scolds Iruma for risking himself again, but admits he did excellently. Opera understands why Sullivan chose Iruma as his grandson. Six Fingers reach Kirio and explain Lord Bale sent them. Kirio is overcome with emotion realizing Iruma destroyed Beast and believes they are fated enemies. Bale contacts him. Angry Walter Park still stands as its purpose to de-stress demons in their evil cycles is a barrier to his plans. Ronald's father puts the misfits in a hotel as thanks for saving his park. Mary approaches Iruma alone at a party, despite it looking like a romantic manga scene. Iruma tells her he is still unsure of his ambition, but for now is happy to work to keep having fun. Mary asks Iruma if, one day, they can do something together. Just the two of them and despite being interrupted by Clara and Asmodeus, Aruma agrees, causing Amari to pass out. The attack is mentioned on the news and Aruma becomes a hero overnight, causing the hotel to be swarmed by reporters and admirers. As it is unsafe to return home, Clara invites them to her house instead. Aruma is surprised as he has never been invited to a friend's house. Arriving, they find Clara's mother and siblings going overboard to welcome Clara's first friends. Their home is filled with strange objects apparently sent home by Clara's father, a professional adventurer. Clara is embarrassed when Aruma is shown her baby picture album until he remarks that she was super cute. It is explained that the family collects their food from the surrounding hubbub forest. Clara and Asmodeus try to compete over finding the best ingredients for Aruma so Clara's mother suggests hunting the Shabu Shabu from Collateral Cave the most delicious beast in the forest. Clara praises Iruma as the hero of Walter Park, causing Asmodeus to consider if he actually helped at Walter Park at all. The Shabu Shabu is a strange monster made from both animal and vegetable parts. It almost eats Clara's brothers but Asmodeus saves them and Clara's mother arrives and catches the Shabu Shabu. After dinner Clara is revealed to be excellent at singing relaxing bedtime songs. The next morning, Clara's mother secretly adds more photos to her album showing Clara has continued to grow up. Amelie's father, Henry, flies towards Clara's home. Henry informs Aruma he can return home but turns furious when Aruma asks about Amari. Amari plans a perfect date and arranges to meet Aruma privately at Aquacase, an aquarium slash swimming pool, but Aruma remains oblivious it is a date. Amari's plan fails repeatedly. Due to her greater height, she cannot hold Aruma's hand because their hands are too far apart, and Iruma can't hold her from behind on the water slide because her taller height means she has to ride behind him instead. Iruma buys gifts for everyone, including Clara, which makes Amari jealous and worrying the date isn't exciting enough. They attend the fortune-telling show where Mako, a water dragon, psychically picks ideal romantic partners. Unfortunately, the water has washed off the perfume hiding Iruma's human scent, so Mako tries to eat him. Amari defeats Mako, ending up with Aruma in her arms. Amari becomes depressed her plan was a total failure until Aruma notices a cut on her leg, 
Despite the embarrassment, Amari claims it hurts to walk and wants to be carried. So Aruma uses magic to make the taller Amari light enough to carry in his arms, making her realize that despite her plan's failure, it was the best date ever. Aruma finishes the extra homework assigned by Caligo for losing the Walter Park competition. Sullivan and Opera take him shopping, and while buying books Sullivan purchases a copy of Prophecies about the Demon King. Many people wonder why Sullivan still hasn't taken the throne so Aruma asks about the Demon King. Sullivan remembers how Dracula, the now missing Demon King, was a lot like Aruma. Sullivan explains about the Thirteen Crowns, the leaders of the Netherworld like Sullivan. To become Demon King requires the support of all Thirteen, but it is a heavy responsibility as the Demon King is the Netherworld itself, and his power over it is absolute, and can remake it any way they see fit. Explaining current Netherworld society is simply the way Dracula wished it to be. Sullivan even remarks he would be interested to see what would happen if Aruma became Demon King, something Aruma seems quite concerned about, especially later after reading the Prophecy Scroll. Alacrid summons himself and berates Aruma for forcing him to swallow all beasts' magic and then largely ignoring him ever since while enjoying himself. As the new term begins, Caligo informs the misfits unless they all achieve Dalith, fourth rank, they will lose their right to use the royal classroom.